Hello there, my name is Adam Hugill and today I'm going to be giving a talk about YouTube, creating videos for YouTube and in particular this is all about cycle touring. I, my, my channel, my YouTube channel is my name, Adam Hugill and I'll be putting a few links within this video, a few references to my channel uh, as there's some things I've already talked about in previous videos which I think will be of benefit for this but firstly um, I'd just like to first actually just give a thank you to the organisers of the Cycle Touring Festival. Uh, I know it's a difficult time to organise particularly doing it virtually online but it does mean that I get to make this video and do this really from here because I probably uh, had a struggle to attend it this year the Cycle Touring Festival because I'm currently away with work and it means that hopefully you guys that are watching this video get some value from what I've learned, I suppose, from uh, what is really three years of making videos. Is it three years? Yeah, pretty much. Two and a half years of making videos for YouTube uh, and making a what I, I consider for myself to be a successful YouTube channel. Uh, in the grand scheme of YouTube, my channel is very small, currently sat on about 17,000 subscribers. I've had well over a million views of my uh, videos and today I'm going to talk about really storytelling. I'm going to talk about the kit and equipment that you need to, to make videos and I'm going to talk about monetization on how a YouTube channel, channel can fund the journey if you get lucky I suppose and equally putting a lot of hard work and a lot of effort into it. I'm going to reveal the curtain and kind of show you, you really my thoughts on what I think about filmmaking, you, making YouTube videos and how that really does work with cycle touring and how and what, and what the positives and negatives it's brought for myself. I'm going to be referring to my notes throughout. So, yeah, I'm trying to keep this structured, but knowing me, I'm going to waffle on to some different tangents. So firstly, I'll tell you about myself and my experience and background just really briefly. Um, I we used to be in the army, I, I was in the army for eight years, decided to leave the army and really wanted to experience more freedom and travel to all these places in the world that I've read about and seen without having to take a weapon with me or wear a uniform. So uh, I decided the best way to do that was to travel by bicycle. Uh, I set off on my bike trip in the summer of 2018. I cycled from the UK down to the bottom of Spain by myself and then towards the end with a friend of mine called Ollie. Um, all them videos are up on my YouTube cha channel and I'll put a little link here. I then from there, me and my wife, we cycled from Singapore and we set off through Southeast Asia up towards China, did a bit of a loop around China through Vietnam. Uh, Cambodia, Laos and then back to uh, to Bangkok and it was a long old twisty journey. We ended up, me and my wife decided to basically go our separate ways. We had a lot of things going on in the background which are not in the videos really if I'm honest and we decided to go our separate ways and I continued my journey. Uh, this was about April 2020 and I continued solo uh, through Korea, Japan, and I cycled through the from Alaska, through Canada and the USA. So that took me 18 months in total. I cycled uh, 20,000 kilometers and uh, had an amazing time and filmed the journey, uh, all of the journey, including the time where I was by myself and when I was with my wife. So I filmed a, a part of my life for 18 months and shared it with the world, which it's got so many positive things have come about from me making those videos. There's definitely some negatives as well, which I definitely will get into. But it's been wholly rewarding, uh, I feel. It's opened my eyes to a creative process and, and, and making something from nothing. Um, I think I've got better at telling a story, I hope. And... Doing that through the, the medium of video is quite, it's, it's quite a challenge because you're trying to keep people's attention and also, yeah, using real life footage without doctoring the footage. Um, so there we go. There's a brief overview of my journey. I continue making videos for my YouTube channel 
and I continued last year, I tried to cycle the Great Divide mountain bike route from my home up to the top of Scotland. It was an absolute disaster and I, I, I failed big. So I filmed that and that is on my YouTube channel also. So lots of things there that I filmed and things that I've done throughout my life there. Um, and I think a really good place to start is why? Why make videos? Why do it? I think we've all watched these amazing videos and films that people have created. And that's how I started. I'd watched Ben Page, a wonderful filmmaker. He made his uh, film The Frozen Road and massively influenced my decision to start making YouTube videos. Albeit Ben didn't make YouTube videos, he made a great film. Uh, I tried to make my YouTube videos in a similar uh, cinematic style to him. I'm nowhere near as good as Ben. <laughs> I'll definitely say that. But I tried in uh, definitely at times um, to do that. But I did it in my own way, my own style. Um, so yeah, I think I've been. We've all been influenced and seen them. The Road to Caracol um, is another one of my um, favourite films by Kyle Dempster, who um, sadly is is no longer with us. Which again shows the, the realities of, of living an adventurous life. You could be filming something and the worst could happen and it is an exciting, sometimes occasionally dangerous thing that we do is going out there and adventuring. Um, but his film, Cycling Through Kyrgyzstan, oh, great film, great film. That's like another one of the films that really inspired me. Uh, there's a YouTuber called Ryan Van Duzer. Um, who, oh, I, I watched his videos for the longest time before I did my, my bike trip. I used to, he's an American from Boulder, Colorado, and he makes the most amazing bike touring, sometimes running videos as well, but generally bike, biking is his thing. And he is the most happy person, the most joyous person I've seen. He's got a real energy for life, does Ryan. And I was very fortunate to meet him on my bike tour. I made an effort to, to get to him in Boulder, Colorado. So he's now someone I would consider a friend. So they're the people that really have inspired me. I watch their videos and you think, man, I, I want to make videos like you. And you may have seen these people or other people yourselves and may think the same thing. So really, it's like, how, how do I do that? How do I go about doing that? Um, it's tricky. It, it, it's, a, it's a tough one to suddenly have an idea and plan on how to make a video as good as Ryan Van Duzer. And really, it all starts in a day. It all starts one day at a time. Um, I'm filming this video today on my mobile phone. And I think that's the first place to start, is to start creating something. You've got to really have a passion for creating and trying to tell a story. That's where it has to start. If you are trying to make videos because you want to make money, like for that sort of reason, I don't think bike touring is the best way to do it. I think if you want to make money, I don't know, make a makeup tutorial video or something which is going to be much, much more watched, I think, than the niche of bike touring, which for me is the best niche in the world. It's the thing that I love. I've really, I feel, got involved with the community. and I'm here talking to you guys today, basically, because I bike toured through all these countries in the world and, and made films. Um, so yeah, I think telling us your story has to be one of your driving factors. If you're wanting to tell a story and that's something you really want to do through the means of video, uh, that's a really good reason to, to make videos. For me, making videos add, it added a purpose to my bike touring. Uh, I didn't really need extra purpose. Maybe I did, I don't know. I think I didn't need extra purpose. I would have done the bike tour anyway if there was no cameras. I definitely would have done the bike tour if there's no if cameras didn't exist. Absolutely. But they do, and YouTube does. And for me, I left the military and thought, how can I get into a new career? I did think about going to film school. So I was already had an active interest in making videos and thought about trying to become a filmmaker. And then I thought, what's the best way of, of uh, making films, I suppose, rather, uh, rather than going to film school, is to go out and just make films, make videos. And there's a platform like YouTube, which allows you to put videos out to the world and they pay you some ad revenue, which is amazing. It's amazing. It used to be back in the day you needed a TV uh, like contract, you need Channel 4 or BBC or 
nowadays Netflix to say, yeah, we'll give you some money to go out and do something. And now you don't need that. You can do this all by yourself. I was the producer, the editor, sound design, and I was the main star of the of my show. So, um, and I really had, I own, own the direction of where, wherever my videos go. And that's really rewarding and fulfilling, I feel, to have created something that just didn't exist previously. Um, another reason people do start YouTube channels is to make money. Wow, yeah, making money. And we'll really get into that in a later section, but it's something that you can definitely do through YouTube. It won't make you rich, but it can definitely pay for you to do this and to pay for your hobby. Okay, so getting started, what do you need to make videos? Uh, so firstly, your bike touring gear and kit, you need all of that. And however you're bike touring, that's really for you to decide. And there's thousands of videos about bike touring gear, one of which I have made myself. Uh, so I'll put a little link to that. And this is all the gear that I took on my bike tour uh, at one stage. But for sure, that, that kit list does change and adapt depending on your environment, how long you're cycling for. And it also changes depending on... And really, yeah, the type of terrain you're on as well. So yeah, then, so you need the normal gear, but then you also need the equipment to film. And as a bare minimum, the first thing you need is a camera, of which you've probably got one. Your mobile phone will will do the job of of, rec of filming, of recording everything you need. Now, mobile phones today are probably better cameras than expensive cameras you were buying back in. I don't know, 2010, 2005, it's now 2021. I've got an iPhone here with a 4K camera. It's got slow-mo, it's got time-lapse features. It's brilliant, it's really good. Storage can be a bit of a problem with an iPhone. Uh, an iPhone can also, you can, you can struggle to get really high quality shots at times, but for 99% of the shots I film, a, a phone would do the job. Um, yeah, it pretty much would. Now, as you get more into uh, bike touring, uh, filmmaking, I think that a lot of people want to, they feel a need to, um, they feel the need to spend money and invest in their equipment. But often it becomes this cycle of investing in equipment and getting really marginal ga gains and returns. And I'm a, I'm a perfect example of someone that's fallen into this trap. I have bought a number of drones. I'm on my third drone now. I lost two drones on my bike tour, of which both are in videos of me losing a drone. I lost one drone on a ferry in <laughs> in Canada, which is a nightmare. Two thousand pound drone is a Mavic DJI Mavic Two Pro. Uh, that could have funded my journey for months, and the the camera angles and the film shots I get from a drone. The difference between a, a DJI Spark, or which is quite a cheap drone, or a Mavic 2 Pro, there is a difference. I, I, there absolutely is a difference. But the Spark, which I use now, gets 99%, or is at least almost there with what you need. It gives you an aerial fo photo. So don't try to get too hung up on kit and equipment. I use a mirrorless camera, but still there's negatives to that uh, using a larger camera as opposed to using a small point and shoot uh, one of the cameras a lot of people use is a Panasonic I think it's a, a G7 it's a very small handheld camera great great for filming and everything else I think the one thing that is important is sound uh, mobile phones are pretty tricky to, to record sound internally you can get attachment microphones but nowadays particularly with the audio jack being for an iPhone in particular, being part of the lightning cable, it's a bit of a pain having a microphone. It's a pain to attach and get it ready. So, and it's also difficult to sometimes record whilst you're cycling. A GoPro is often used to record action shots. And I use a GoPro, I think, for all my on the bike shots, pretty much. And the GoPro, new GoPros are great. They're great for sound compared to the older ones. And they're pretty stable. And yeah, they do a great job. So yeah, GoPros can be good, but again, it's just an, another camera. If you're just using a GoPro or just using a phone or just using a drone, you're going to have limitations with all of these cameras. So I think the most important thing is to have just a basic camera, which will do the job. 
And actually in the future, I'm really gonna test just going on a bike tour with just my phone, recording the whole thing on that to see what the difference in quality is, because it's something I've never actually done myself. I've always used other cameras. So yeah, kit and equipment uh, can be tricky. The, the next part of kit and equipment is the laptop, the editing device, the hard drives, the SD cards, the tripods, it all starts to all add up when you start adding up the weight of the kit, the cost of the kit, and just it just can become crazy. Before you know it, you'll have sliders and rigs and <laughs> it just gets ridiculous. You do not need most of that gear, particularly if you're just starting out. Now, for my bike tour, I did take a laptop with me. I took a MacBook Pro. Again, I'm taking £2,000 of expensive equipment with me cycling around the world and it's just the risk if i was i had to be willing to lose it and break it um, i'll show you the case in which my laptop was carried in so this is the same case at Thule, i believe Thule, Thule, swedish very hard case i say hard it's not rock hard but it's quite padded and my laptop sat sits within here and i used to have this slid down a down the side of my pannier and just try to cushion it out with soft clothes and and sleeping bags and stuff like that but this laptop for me was essential for editing i was using final cut pro to edit but people do use adobe uh, use adobe premiere pro which is industry standard but you have to pay a subscription fee to to use adobe which, which can be quite expensive i think something like 30 pounds a month Whereas Final Cut, you pay for it once, it's still very expensive, nearly £300. And before you know it, all these costs can add up. If you're starting out, I'd highly recommend you just start out filming using a real basic software such as iMovie or, or a similar Windows Movie Maker on, on a Windows machine. Um, starting simple is the best way, keeping it basic is the best way definitely to start with. And as you start to reach the limitations of the, um, of the software you're using, so with, uh, so I'd, I'd say with the Apple software, with iMovie, you can't do, there's not much variation on editing titles. Now, nobody watches a, a, a film and thinks, oh, them titles are, are not very good. <laughs> nobody cares about that type of stuff, really. The content and the quality of the video is, is really what matters. Uh, so yeah, I think that's quite a lot on kit and equipment there and the things that I took myself. I think a point here I've wrote down is making bike touring films and videos, I'm using that term interchangeably, but you know what I mean, it's basically a video or film, doesn't really make a difference. It's no different to making any other film or video. I'll say that again. Making bike touring films and videos is no different to making any other film or video. Just because you happen to be on a bicycle doesn't really change an awful lot. There's things which we can talk about with regards to bike touring that are specific, such as using a GoPro to catch action shots or, or, or really where you're going to pack the kit and equipment. But in short, traveling by bike doesn't change is it an interesting video or not. It could be about bike touring and not very interesting, but it doesn't make it interesting because it's about bike touring. I think my point here is, if you want to make videos about your bike tours, I think you've got to have a passion in creating, creating some sort of video or film or telling a story. And it's the story, the human aspect, I feel is the most important thing you're trying to get across to the audience. You're trying to get the audience to feel something, to feel sad or happy or ecstatic, or nervous, or scared, and all these emotions that are so interesting and so, it's, it's a, I've had people message me saying that certain scenes or certain moments in my videos has made them feel so emotional, it's brought them to tears, or people have felt so happy because I was happy, or because what they saw was happy, or the kindness of somebody. And I think they're the bits which when you capture them in film, and share them with an audience, it makes it very much worthwhile for me. With YouTube specifically here, so as opposed to just making a film, but with YouTube, it's a, it's a platform where people are always fighting for attention. 
they say that people's attention spans within social media in particular is quite short. And I'm not talking about making Instagram videos or Facebook videos here, but with YouTube, I often will get asked what's the perfect length for a YouTube video or for a bike touring video. And for me, the answer is the video should be as long as you're able to keep the viewer's attention. There's no real answer to it. Like, if your video is five minutes long, but I'm only really interested for two minutes, and then for the last three minutes, you just try to sell a product, or it's just not really very interesting, you'll only keep somebody for, for them a minute or two whilst they're interested. But let's say if you're making a film, and it's an hour long, and it's captivating and it's really amazing for an hour, people will stay for an hour if it's interesting. And I really do believe that the good content, the most viewable and watchable and value added content on YouTube will come to the top. And when we talk about value added, what does that mean? What does value added? Um, so there's a few purposes for any YouTube video that that is out there. It's either, I feel, for inf information, it's either informative or it's entertainment. It's really the two categories that video sits in. Um, and I have a mixture of both, but out on the percentage wise, I would say I'm about 90% entertainment and about 10% um, informative. So let's go for the entertainment, the 90% the first, because that is the majority of my channel. Um, I make like I said, vlog type content, cinematic vlogs, where I'm showing you my story as I go through a day and a week on a bicycle. I show you me putting my tent up and eating food and meeting people. There's elements in there which are informative if you're specifically looking to go bike touring in Korea and Japan, for example. You watch my videos, you might get some ideas about where to go yourself, what routes are like, what the, sh what the costs are. So I put elements of that into there. But really, it's 90% entertainment, I believe, even within them videos. And then I have other videos, and my most viewed video, and actually it's most of my most viewed videos are the informative videos. And this can be my bike touring gear. It could be this video where I'm giving you information. This isn't really entertainment, it's informative. And those videos do exceptionally well and are evergreen within YouTube, which means that they, will, they are viewable at any time and they don't really get out of date. Let's say if I was making a video about a trend, um, about, uh, okay, so things that are quite new. So I'm talking about a news event, or I'm talking about a change in visa regulations for certain countries. That will only be relevant at that time when it comes out. But let's say I'm making a video about my bike touring gear, that's gonna be relevant for quite a long time. And things that get updated and changed, then so I can make another one which is more updated. And uh, but people do that, and I have done that absolutely. So I think working out which side you sit in, and and really you can do both. I do both, but I feel like I've built an audience through the entertainment side first, and then given them little bits of information when I feel comfortable to do that. So the bike touring gear video that I made, I made it after spending over a year traveling by bike. And I thought it's probably a good time to tell her because I get asked all the time, what are you packing? What do you take? What gear do you have? So it took me about 20, 30 minutes to film, set my camera up, just talked to the camera, pulled things out of my panniers. And that video has got well over 100,000 views. I think it's nearly at 200,000 views. And it, the video itself has made me quite a lot of money. And it was probably the easiest video I made, but I don't feel like that video will have done so well if I hadn't have made the other videos. So there we go. There's uh, my thoughts on, on what you're going to, type of videos you're going to make. Um, yeah. Uh, let's now look into the positives and negatives of making videos. I'm going to start with the negatives so then we can go on to the good stuff afterwards. Um, but it's not all good. It's not all good having a YouTube channel. And some of the negative aspects I've experienced are, uh, um, it takes you away from the actual cycling itself. So let's say you just want to get your head down and spend the day cycling, and you don't want to get your camera out, it's, it's quite nice. But having to get your camera out because you think, oh, that's a great shot, I need this to tell the story of where I'm going next, it can take up your time. It takes up a lot of time to set up a camera, put it on the side of the road, cycle back, turn around, cycle forward. And I've done that so many times, like, 
every single time you see me cycling past, that's something I've done. And those of you that make videos know the pain of doing that, but actually I quite enjoy it because of the process afterwards. And it slows me down and I'm trying to bring a positive to what is really a negative. But it, for some people it's too much hassle, can't be doing with it. And I get that. The editing, often people will complain about the editing. Again, I love the process of editing. I think you have to, to get to over 100 videos. If you don't enjoy editing, you can outsource it and pay somebody else to do it. Or maybe if you've got a friend that's willing to do it for free, great. But um, yeah, if you don't, like most people won't, you'll have to do it yourself. And editing can be time consuming, getting the correct cuts. And it can be a bit of a steep learning curve to learn how to use the software. And some people aren't that technologically minded and maybe they don't enjoy that process. Um, I'd love to, for somebody to edit my videos for me. I would love to see what that looks like, but equally I don't fully want somebody else to do all of my videos. I don't make enough videos, I think, at the moment for that to be the case. But whilst I was on the bike tour, if somebody else could have edited my videos and would have done that, I, I could have paid that for somebody to do that and it could have taken away um, from me having to do that. But then the negative would still be, you still have to film it, you still have to do the file management and storage. This is all very boring stuff, but it's very necessary how you're going to get that um, big video files in their raw format to somebody probably across the world because you're traveling everywhere to then edit them, release them at a quality that you're content with. Um, yeah, it can be quite a challenge to say the least. The equipment is costly. I have spent thousands of pounds literally on, on equipment to, to make videos for bike touring. I've definitely probably, well, I've probably spent more than I've earned through through YouTube, <laughs> yeah, I've definitely spent more than I earn. Um, that could change if I earn more in the future and start spending less. And um, it, looking after your kit and equipment is important to reduce that. And But buying good kit is also important for it to be worthwhile, um, to, to not break, basically. There's an added pressure of making the videos, which for some people can be too much. And something which many people maybe not really think about is you're sharing details of your life, like it or not. If you're gonna make YouTube videos, people want to know about you. And you have to give some of you, excuse me. You have to give some of you to the, to the audience. Um, I started my videos cycling with my wife when I started those videos, I had no idea at that moment that down the line we would break up. And it's, it's rather embarrassing to have to tell the feel, you have to tell the world that you've now broken up because you're now by yourself. People are going to ask. I could have just stopped making videos altogether and been like, no, nope, don't want to share anymore. And I felt like that at the time, if I'm honest. But I wanted to keep creating. I thought it'd be worthwhile for myself. And I'm glad I did, but I, I didn't earn uh, my dirty laundry out there, but I still had to share aspects of my life, uh, which is tricky. It's definitely tricky. Um, but you've got to find where you're comfortable with, where your line is. And I think really even saying to yourself or working out how much are you going to share and what aren't you going to share. And some people that do this quite in quite a good way. Alistair Humphreys, great example. Um, he talks about having a persona which is his public social media persona, and then his going home work life persona. I personally don't do that. I don't agree with that myself. I think that is, it can be, okay, I feel it's disingenuine for myself, but I see where he comes from and he wants his personal life to be private. Um, yeah, but people are naturally interested and I think drawing that line is important. Okay. The positives of making videos if you're bike touring. Um, I'm going to start with the best one. It's making friends and connections. If I didn't make those videos, I wouldn't have made certain friends of mine, such as Ryan Van Duzer is a great example. I wouldn't know these people. I wouldn't have watched their videos probably, and they wouldn't have watched mine, and we wouldn't have connected. And I think my YouTube channel is, and, and mine is definitely small enough that I don't really get the spam comments that you see on some other people's channels or the negative troll-like comments. And they do exist for sure, 
and I'm yeah it's not I'm not immune to it but I'm equally it's not, I'm not overwhelmed by that so so for me yeah, making friends and making connections uh, I, some of the friends I've made through my YouTube channel are some of my best mates now which is amazing it's such a great thing I've got a lasting memento of a big old journey I've got hours of footage all edited on the internet and hopefully it will last and it'll be something I can show my son when I'm when he's older uh, he's eight now and he's already seen some of my videos but as he gets older he'll have an insight to what his dad was like when he was 30 years old and that's quite nice it's nice for me to probably be 50 60 years old and look back at the journey I did back in 2019 and um, it paid in part for my journey and this is something which people are really interested in is the monetization. I have made previous videos where I talk specifically about how much money my channel has made over the last year and the last couple of years. But in short, at its peak on my bike trip, I was making over a thousand pounds a month, which is an amazing amount of money to make for making videos uh, about something you really enjoy. And I, it was growing. And then I ended the bike trip and announced to everybody I was coming home and my, my money went down accordingly. I didn't make all, out, all of that money through AdSense. I also had a Patreon um, channel, which I still have, and some people are still supporting me now. I make nowhere near as much as I was at the peak. I think at the most, I was making about five or 600 pounds a month through Patreon. Uh, I made money through live streams, which were a fantastic way of increasing my revenue because people would feel engaged to talk to me uh, whilst I was doing the live stream and would give me a super chat whilst I was talking. And sometimes like people would give me $10, $20, $5, depending on, on their own situation and how the conversation was going. And oh, I can only be so grateful for these people that were effectively funding my journey from afar. And I felt like I knew lots of these people. Like I could remember, I still remember their usernames. Um, yeah, it was great at that time, but really it gets to the point on my bike trip where I wasn't doing, I wasn't doing it to make money, but it became a little bit like that. Like I felt I had to keep filming, had to keep editing. And that's where I talk about the negative of having the pressure of having to make content. So if I don't, I may not be able to afford to keep going. And I was, I decided towards the end that I probably needed to stop, earn some money myself and and build up my own funds if I ever wanted to continue. Um, so yeah, YouTube can make you money. Uh, it can be a great way to do it, but I really don't think you should go into YouTube with the sole aim of making making money. You go into YouTube for all the reasons I've already said, to uh, inform people, to entertain, to tell a story. Uh, I think if you've got a passion about a subject such as bike touring, there's always space for you to tell your version of why it's great or the things you've learned. There's no like, oh, too many people have made videos. If you really think you can do it and you want to do it, go for it. Make the videos. OK. Um, yeah, so if you really wanted to make money from YouTube, other niches definitely will perform better, like food channels or just general travel videos do generally better. But bike touring videos for me are unique because you're part of a community. And that's that's really the part for me that adds that extra value. OK, I think we're getting to the close there about really my journey. And as a filmmaker and the things I've learned, if I could go back to the day, days before I started making these videos and give myself any advice on how do you um, yeah, how, how, any advice on how to be a successful YouTube creator? I tell myself, and it's really, you'll hear this other places, but being consistent is key. Just keep going for it. Like, don't get disheartened. Don't, I think for me, I, I made a video where I showed, I was in China, and I made a video where somebody uh, treated a dog really poorly. I put that into a video. And I wish I had not done that. That was a mistake, an individual mistake, because I think people come to my videos to escape and to feel good. Um, and I don't think that even though that did happen, it's really in line with what I wanted to present to the world. 
So think about the content you're presenting. What do you want to present? What's the narrative you're trying to create? Is it the world is great or you're trying to show injustices socially or you're just trying to show that riding a bike is fun? And I think that that's really why people watch my videos is they want to see somebody on a bike having fun. There are times where you're not having fun and it's extremely important to film that. Film when you don't feel happy, film when you do feel happy. You film everything, I suppose. And I think the range of human emotions that go with that are important. So yeah, if I could give myself any lessons going back, it would be to be consistent. I've definitely struggled with consistency and just keep going for it and, and just really keep making content and believe in yourself. That self-belief is important, it's really important, because no one else is really going to believe in you if you don't believe in yourself. So there we go. That is my talk on filmmaking. If you have any questions, uh, you can enter your questions into this YouTube video down in the comment section below, and I will respond. I will get back to your question and um, either give you a direct answer or give you a link to a video if I already answered that question. But ask away. I'm, I'm here to help in this community. And I hope you really enjoyed my talk. Uh, enjoy the rest of the talks at the Cycle Touring Festival. And thank you for coming along. Bye.